Good afternoon folks, it's Dave here uh, with a little video on how to remove the left hand palm keys from the saxophone. So that's the left hand side as you're playing. So your D, E flat and F key. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward job to do. Uh, just be careful. Don't use too much pressure uh, because you don't want to damage anything as you do it. And the idea is that you can remove them, clean, clean the pads properly, uh, re-oil the threads on the screws and also just clean the rims of the holes because sometimes they can get a bit sticky uh, especially the top F I find. So to start me off I've got a Chinese takeaway tub you know always useful uh, three sticky labels that I've cut up D, E flat and F one for each key so I know which one's which. Two screwdrivers one that will fit the screws exactly and I've checked that this is, is going to be big enough uh, a very fine one so that once I've loosened the threads off because those keys have got uh, springs underneath rather than at the side uh, that I can push the bolt through uh, to take it out. I've also got just in case I need them some small pliers. Now these pliers are special pliers in the fact that they've got no grip marks on the inside. Ones with grip marks will damage the, uh, the screws, so you don't really want to use those. So as I say, I've got a special pair here with no grip marks on it, uh, and I will be very, very gentle with them and just ease them out, maybe with a, a mixture of the screwdriver pushing from one side and pulling from that side. Just depends on how difficult it gets in. Okay, so uh, I'll get the sacks and show you, and we'll go from there. So these are the keys I'm going to be taking off. So it's the D key, the E flat key, and the F key. Now at the moment I've got palm risers on those, so I'll just pull those off. Uh, if you've got ones that you've made that are stuck on, they should be fine to leave on, but I'll just take these off so they don't get in the way. Okay, simple as that. So they should just pull off like that. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll put this on the bench and we'll have a look. Right, so I've got the sacks on the bench now. So the keys that we're going to be removing are the D key, the E flat key, and the F key. Now what I have noticed, that looking at this, uh, this is my tenor sacks, is that the screws for the D and the E flat have got the heads nearest the camera, uh, but the F has actually got the head on the opposite side. So I suppose that's really, that if you only ever need to take the F key off, you can come in from that side without having to take these off as well. So that's quite a good thing. I've never seen that before. Uh, so you may find that they're all on the same side on your sax, or you may find that you have to turn the instrument over. So just gonna go ahead and sort of unscrew this one. As I say, if your eyesight's not brilliant, make sure you've got a a nice strong light there. Line up the hole as it were there now and unscrew those. Now just keep unscrewing until you feel it click every time it turns and that just basically means the thread should be loose now. So I can pull, I mean this is quite good because it's a fairly new sax, it's about four years old uh, and the, the rods are clean because I do clean them uh, and it comes out fairly straightforwardly. Just be aware if your sax is an older sax that the rods might be a bit gummed up and might take a bit of persuading. So as you can see now as I take my finger off of that key it springs loose because of that and that is a spring of the return spring there. Right so that's the D key on goes the sticky label, put the, the screw through the slot, drop it into the tray. Let's do the E flat now. Same process. Line up, release.
not easy to do this while you've got a camera looking over your shoulder, getting in the way. do it with my fingers yet. Yet again, press onto the key to take the pressure off of the spring, pull it out, catch it as it springs up, put the bolt through the middle, sticky label, E flat key, and then we've got exactly the same process to do with the other one, but I've obviously got to turn the sacks over. There's nothing different, so I'm just going to cut the next stage. So as you can see all three keys are now off, all labelled, all got the, the screws going through the middle of them. Uh, the next process is basically cleaning them up uh, really because uh, that's all I need to do on this. I'm not changing pads or anything. Uh, I would leave that to a professional. So but it's a good idea while you've got them off is to just check certain bits over. So what I'm going to do now is put two out of the way because uh, the process is the same for all three. So we'll put the D and the E flat out of the way, especially when the stickers come off of the D. Don't stick it on the pad like I just did. You don't want glue on the pad. So we've got the F key. Longest one. What am I going to do with it while I've got it off? So the first things first is I'm going to take the, uh, the screw and just check how, how it rolls. Because that will give me an idea of if it's straight or it's, it's got slightly bent. And that looks reasonably good. Uh, you, you can probably see it's quite nice and shiny. So that's good. Uh, but I will give it a good wipe. Some of them will come out looking a, a lot darker colour. That could be down to the metal of use, but it could also be used to dry dried oil and stuff on that. The other thing is also the thread. Yeah, is make sure you give that a good wipe. And, you know, you can even consider using a uh, an old toothbrush on there with some lighter fluid just to clean the dirt out. This has been done recently, so I'm not going to do that myself. But yeah, just a little, maybe a child's toothbrush, some cigarette lighter fluid, like... Uh, that one just a small drop on it and give it a, a wipe over just to clear out any dirt so that's that the next bit would be to get a uh, pipe cleaner and push through the hole check through the hole make sure you can see clearly that there's no sort of burrs or rough edges and that it's clean on the inside pipe cleaner going through two or three times just to clear out the old oil and also you could do that through the holes that it's come from yeah clean both of those out as well always a good thing to do uh check the pad now this you can probably see that the pad has got something on it so i will clean that using as i say lighter fluid and a cotton wool bud just give that it could be a case of the pads coming towards the end of its life yeah in which case if it doesn't clean up very well next time it's in for a service I will probably get that pad changed but give it a good clean clean all the rivet in the middle clean the grooves especially because that's where the pad starts to stick give it a thoroughly good and that stuff on the pad is sort of coming off. Now you can see there's some brown there. 
that is a lot of that is the dye that is used to make the pad look a, an even shade of brown uh, yeah so some of it's coming off so I'll, I'll put some more on the other end of the q-tip give it a good soak Yeah, there's more and more coming off, so I'll give that another thorough good go in a minute. Okay, so we'll leave that to dry. While it's off, check the cork. Is it on strong? You know, does it need gluing back on? Because they do come loose sometimes. A uh, little drop of oil on the spring wouldn't hurt. Uh, check it's not moving left to right. That can cause an issue. They are held on with tiny screws there so and if you're happy with that and give it a wipe over with a cloth to make sure it's all shiny so that would be what I would do with that in preparation to putting it back on uh, what I would then do is the rims of the holes so I've cleaned the rims of the holes yet again using lighter fluid inside the holes outside the holes and also, as I said before, pipe cleaner through the threads, give them a good clean, a tiny drop of oil in there. Uh, I've got some saxophone key oil. A bottle like this will last you years, and I mean years. Uh, so it's not an expensive buy, and it's worth doing. You, I don't know if you can see very well. Let's see if I can move it in. So this bit here, uh, is a groove that is really for to for the end of the spring that's on the bottom of the pad so to catch that bit and that's what stops it sliding so give that a good clean get rid of any build up of dirt in there yeah and uh, you know just prevention I suppose really rather than cure and while it's off you can obviously give it a good polish and get in between the posts a bit easier tidy it up like that Okay, so now what I'm going to do is show you how to put back the uh, rods you've done. It's just a reverse order, but I will go through it for you. Okay, so now I've, I've cleaned all the uh, slots out for the, uh, the spring. So with the tip of the spring there, I'm doing the F key first now because you do it in reverse order. Make sure that you line it up if you've got these uh, sort of guide holes. Line it up and with my sort of thumb gently pressing, and I do say gently, uh, above the posts, push down until it lines up. So it's a case of lining up and that's gone quite through well. You may have to swap the pressure to the opposite side just to get the opposite side to line up, but that's lined up pretty well. I'm pleased with that. So, and then the difficult part is now lining up the screw head from this angle. So let's turn it and just turn, just turn a few strokes till it's gripped and then just check the key. Yeah, because there's nothing more annoying than screwing it all the way in and finding that you've not got the spring connected properly. Okay, so that's that one. Then you go to the E flat key. So we've done the uh, F key. What I didn't show you was the fact that I'd oiled everything. So a drop of oil into the hole just a small but you don't need much at all and then a little drop on the thread just a tiny drop you don't need much you can wipe most of that off once you've done it uh, line the pad up with the hole and that should then guide you to the spring groove now on this sax this this screw goes in from this side so lined up, that's gone in fairly well. That's moving okay. Yep, 
line that up. Try not to stab yourself, that's the other thing. Okay, so just check the F key again, make sure nothing's catching. And the E flat key. So we've now got two on. And then it's just a case of repeating the process for the D. So drop of oil. That's that done. Tiny bit on there. As I say, wipe most of that off. You don't want too much on there because you don't want it coming loose all the time. Okay, so you can see it now, I've lined the pad up, that then lines up the holes there. I've made sure that the screw is in the groove at the end there, line that up. Now, if I don't apply pressure, that becomes quite difficult to push in. So just a little bit of pressure on the opposite side, just to line the holes up, because the spring's trying to force it out of alignment, because that's what springs do. So we then there. check D, E flat, F, all done. Okay, one other thing. Sometimes screws on the saxophone, and these are as guilty as any other screws, can work loose. And normally that's because there's a rough edge somewhere within the rod or the screw itself. And what it does is it causes a bit of friction. And as you move the key, it gradually unwinds. If you find that's a real issue and you can't get to a tech to either get a new screw put in or it cleaned up, what you can do is take the screw out, drop a small amount, tiny, tiny amount of small, of clear nail varnish in the hole the opposite end, screw the screw back in, and once it dries, it'll hold it steady. But if you do need to remove it when it gets to the tech, nail varnish will crack under pressure, uh, whereas things like Loctite can be too strong. So a little bit of clear nail varnish will keep it in place. I hope that helps, folks, and uh, yeah, see you soon. Cheers. Bye.